So the recording is starting. And I believe Mauricio, you're up and take it away. All righty. Good afternoon, buenas tardes to everyone. Let me see if I could share my screen first. Okay, y'all can see my screen. Okay, sounds great. So once again, thank you, Aaron, for having me here today presenting on Drupal and South Carolina government. My name is Mauricio Orozco. I work for the South Carolina Commission for Minority Affairs. And today we're gonna to be talking very briefly about how exactly uh, Drupal is used as far as uh, websites are concerned um, in South Carolina state government. Um, so basically the first thing we're gonna consider is uh, just gonna give a brief rundown, brief introduction to SCA Interactive. They're actually the uh, company that handles the official government website for the state of South Carolina, sc.gov. Uh, so we're gonna go into some information from them uh, from there, we're going to actually go through the process, and this is the same process that I went through uh, when I built the website for the commission. Uh, so basically, the whole process of uh, between, well, right after you have that initial contact with sc.gov or SC Interactive, uh, and then from there, how finally the final product pushes out. And uh, we have just a little bit of uh, data and statistics uh, it was kind of difficult to get that information. I've uh, been battling to see if I can get some more. Uh, right now, there's not much data uh, available, but uh, hopefully in the future, we'll have that a little bit more enhanced or we can uh, provide some more information on that. So basically, uh, SE Interactive, uh, they're based here in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, let me move this out of the way so I can see what I'm talking about. Now, they currently have, I don't know why there's a football there. <laughs> that was the icon that they recommended, I guess because of the Gamecocks. But uh, they are based out of here, Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, they have a partnership with State of South Carolina to provide e-government services. Uh, so basically, again, um, website development, apps, uh, you name it, anything having to do with uh, website design uh, something that uh, you know, can access online. Um, so the last part provides website development to South Carolina state agencies, counties, and municipalities. So in addition to um, state agencies, they also provide services to other county offices, uh, mainly government offices and uh, other municipalities. So as far as the, uh, on a county level, I live in Lexington County, and they do um, the website for them. And kind of, uh, you know, this is kind of like the standard look for, um, you know, the sc.gov websites. Uh, they kind of have, like you see there, their logo on, on the header, I guess you could call it. Um, and very apt that probably most of the sites have that COVID-19 kind of block there to get people the information they need quickly. And as you see here, it's pretty much how they lay it out where you have your, your nice picture. If you're not familiar with Lexington County, that is pretty much downtown Lexington uh, office for Lexington County. That's where I need to actually go and pay my taxes on my car uh, this month. So that's where exactly I would need to be heading this month to go ahead and do that. So they kind of want to have that flavor there. Um, uh, of that specific area, the county, of course, you can have pictures of Lexington County. Uh, they have the little hot links, as they call it up there on the upper right with employment, quick links, well, I guess they call quick links, contact us, employee introduction. And uh, that's pretty much it. They have also in the middle here, how do I, and something you click uh, directly where, how do I file a complaint or how do I pay my taxes? You know, it's just depending on the uh, website itself. Um, here's a state agency. Um, I figured you guys have seen our website, so let's uh, promote another state agency here. 
uh, this is the Human Affairs Commission. And again, similar design, similar layout. Um, you're gonna see that, uh, of course, there, there is some individuality. Uh, Human Affairs Commission has, has their main colors, excuse me, is green, so of course they wanna incorporate that into the website. Um, here in the middle they have, we prevent, eliminate unlawful discrimination. So when you speak of human affairs, you speak of discrimination, you speak of you know, either employment or any kind of racially motivated um, you know, complaint uh, that's here in the state of South Carolina. Uh, housing is another one that we see a lot. So a lot, it's funny because a lot of people, since we're the Commission on Minority Affairs, everybody, well not everybody, but there are several people who always come to us first and they would send these kind of complaints to us because they think we handle this. And to a certain point, you know, I can see where the confusion comes in because actually the Commission for Minority Affairs was started uh, from human affairs. Uh, this was back 27 plus, 26 plus years ago. And another thing that's funny, you notice there that the commissioner currently is uh, Janie Davis. Now, she was a commissioner before, uh, again, when she, uh, she basically started the commission, uh, helped start the Commission for Minority Affairs. So she then became the director for that uh, a few years back. And she retired. And now she's back again, <laughs> uh, being the commissioner for human affairs. So it's very interesting, her... Uh, trajectory there. So again, I was uh, uh, talking about how SE Interactive is the LLC for the uh, state government's official website. They themselves are going through some changes. Uh, they're doing some rebanding currently. They go by the name SC.gov. Uh, they do business as NIC South Carolina which is National Information Consortium, and they are a subsidiary of NIC, which is the main uh, branch, I guess you could say, the main headquarters. So this happened about, I'd say about a month ago when they finally finished their rebranding process. So, uh, that's, if you don't hear, if you're not familiar with the name NC, SE Interactive, then that's why they have gone ahead and changed that. And, uh, actually, the person I deal with now, he has actually all the new logos and whatnot in his email. So now let's go ahead and go through the process of building a website. Um, this, of course, is after the first initial contact. So after you've contacted them, uh, sc.gov, SC Interactive, and I, and I see South Carolina, they will go ahead and assign you a specific agency representative. Now... This is important and uh, essentially with uh, the websites are concerned, before sc.gov came in, the majority of, well, all of them actually were, all the state agencies were going through their own kind of, um, basically their own vendor or their own person that, or organization that, that would design and implement and secure their website. Um, there were some, and even still today, you still have even big agencies um, that are still dealing with these kinds of formats where, you know, it's just all over the place. Since it's not somebody inside the agency, uh, they're, they're having a hard time just trying to get simple things updated on their website. So, you know, especially nowadays, you want to have, you want to make sure that you have that flexibility of updating your website when things new things come up. And that was kind of our problem at the commission when I first started. Uh, we had a third party uh, doing our website and it was an absolute mess uh, because the person was, you could contact them, uh, they would never respond. Uh, the changes that you wanted to make were either not happening or you were told that certain things weren't possible under the current format. Uh, so it, it was a real headache. Uh, we had, uh, you know, when I first started, we, we, we just had so much information that, that was so old. You had people that didn't work at the commission anymore, yet they were still on the website as an official contact. 
and you know having some kind of clue of how you, how you would design a website i would say well that's for me that's an easy fix that's just going into a list and changing out people's names as far as coding was concerned but apparently this was this humongous task that that could not be done in a day i had to take weeks to finish so at that point i approached the director at that time and you know i voiced my opinion about those kinds of things and i thought based on other agencies that used se.gov, I thought it would be a better place for us to be in because it gave us the power over the website itself for us to go in and change it ourselves and not have to rely on other people. And then the other part of it, since we were dealing with third parties, if there were ever a case where something was hacked or, or something was breached on our website, being that we used as third party, ultimately the responsibility would come on the commission as far as to any breaches were concerned. So I said, well, since this is the official state website, not that we want to put blame on anybody, but if there was somebody, some incident that were happening with our website, we, we can number one, have the co confidence that it will be a secure website, number one. And then number two, if there were something to happen, then that would fall through the channels of the official state government. So, you know, taking that, that weight off of us, I thought was important, giving us the flexibility to go ahead and do things on our own instead of paying somebody else who is not really reliable uh, to, to uh, not only design our website, but to go ahead and manage the website as well. So uh, you're giving a question air after the, after your, uh, from your rep, from your agency representative, and I'll show pictures of that in a second. And uh, once you receive that questionnaire, once you've answered all those questions, you are given a one-on-one -on -one training with that agency representative as far as how to edit the website, how to add things, just some good practices as far as visuals are concerned. Um, I remember Sam is the person who's our agency rep and he show me a couple of, of what, I guess, warning examples, what not to do. Uh, show me some state websites that were kind of rough, um, pretty much a website where it had an email address that you could click on, wasn't linked. The background was red. I think I've mentioned this before. The background was red and the font was black. So, I mean, just imagine looking at a website with one page and you know, all you see is red. So obviously it was pretty triggering <laughs> for most people. I know it was triggering for me when I first saw it. So they, they really control the process. Uh, they set up kind of like a base for every uh, commission or a, every agency. So as long as you're following that pattern, then you should be all right. You know, accessibility was their concern as well, making sure that you know uh, information is available to everyone and uh, it's easy to read. So this is kind of an example. I know it's kind of tight here to look at uh, as far as the questionnaire is concerned. Um, you fill in basically all this information. They ask you for you know what type of font you would like to use. Um, they would, as you can see on this one on the in the middle here, they uh, ask you how your name, how you like your name to look, as far as the header is concerned. And then, of course, to the left or to the right of that, they would ask you, you know, for your logo. Uh, and then on the bottom, as you see there, where the uh, official state seal is, uh, where you would put your logo, kind of like the footer. Uh, and then from there, you would add your address and whatnot. Um, and this one here to the right, they uh, ask you for any social media links, too, of course, for the footer. So they add Facebook and Twitter, whatever you got. Uh, MySpace, if you still got that, they'll add that, too, no problem. Um, so they'll put the actual icon, the official, like the Facebook icon logo on there. And then, it's, of course, you could click on it and it'll go straight to your Facebook page. Um, also, you know, they ask for any kind of just general information, kind of email address. So that could be posted on the website as well. And uh, basically, it's up to you what you want to put on the website as far as the state agency is concerned. I know that. When I first started, there was kind of like this divide between the agency because you had one band saying, okay, well, we're a public facing organization. You know, we should have everybody's information out there as far as their full name, their full title, 
their their phone number, their direct line. That was one band, and the other band was like, well, yes, we're a public facing agency, but there are, sometimes there are people out there who like to use this information for their own nefarious means. So let's go ahead and put our information out there, but not necessarily put our names out there, our full names, maybe abbreviated name, or just put the department and say, okay, well, this is the, the Hispanic Latino program area, and then you can put that person's phone number, but don't say it's that person's direct phone number, and don't put their email address out there. So that was kind of like the first hurdle that I had with this, not from SC.gov, but just, just trying to get on the same page as far as how, what information we're putting out there. Um, before we got SC.gov, this was not a discussion at all. It's basically uh, the director said, okay, I'm putting your information out there and if you like it, that's good. If you don't, well, it's just too bad. Uh, so obviously we, when we did this, I wanted to make sure that it was clear cut communication. Everybody was able to express how they felt about that. So um, ultimately what you see today is kind of what we decided to do uh, would be to leave off the email addresses and give people's full names and uh, the department they work in with the phone number. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, it was decided that even for those people who didn't want their information out there and they had, you know, they had some valid reasons. Um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you have people who have nothing better to do but to troll you and to say some nasty things to you for, for whatever reason. But at the end of the day, we figured that, you know, again, there, there has to be kind of some kind of middle ground with that. And they agreed, those uh, individuals agreed that, yeah, we need our information out there. Uh, can't control what people do with it. But at the same time, uh, just, just put it out there and uh, hopefully <laughs> we won't receive any backlash for some people with that. Uh, training, this is again, both of these things are the manuals uh, that I'm showing here. Um, this is the training manual that you get uh, from the agency rep and it pretty go pretty much goes down the list of as far as how to do things you know how to put pictures up how to scale them um, you know what fonts to use um, you know before I mean, what our website was kind of all over the place I mean you had title and then you had heading one and then you have heading two and then you'll go back to heading one and then heading three and then heading one again. So it's just like the flow was all over the place with our website. Um, you know, some pick some, some pages, uh, we, we basically have our pages um, divided up by our program areas. So of course we had our minority population division areas and, you know, some, some pages were one or two paragraphs long and other pages were just nonstop scrolling. So trying to find kind of balance there. Of course, you know, we, we want to show our work, but we don't want to show that one area is just not doing anything, what appears to be not doing anything, and other areas seem like they're just going to town with everything. So trying to put information. And in. another thing that I found was, you know, talking to the program managers themselves directly because, you know, my worst fear was, okay, this, all this sounds nice on your page, but I don't want to be rude or anything, but do we actually do the stuff that we say we're doing on this website? Because a lot of the things that I found on one page, to my knowledge, we didn't do any of those things. So, you know, what, where, where's the balance there? You're, we don't do any of these things, but we have to show we do something. So where, where is that middle ground lay there? So, you know, it, it was involved at the beginning trying to figure out, okay, what, what exactly can we put on this website? And again, like I said earlier, you had people who didn't work there anymore. Um, and just trying to, trying to create some kind of uh, following on our website too. Something that, of course, you know, starting to use, we've never used before Google Analytics and just trying to use some kind of measuring tools to see what works, what doesn't work and just putting more content up there that, that really our, our communities look for and they expect from us. So um, again, following the, the parameters 
uh, that sc.gov has set for us. Um, you know, I'm used to going in and coding and doing all these kinds of things. Um, they restrict us uh, to do that. I, I can't basically go in there and start coding stuff because again, they want to make sure that there's this, as you saw, Lexington County page is very similar to the Human Affairs Commission uh, page. They just want kind of like that clean, constant look to things where you can still add your personality to it, where you can add your agency branding, but at the same time, they don't want anything that uh, is not accessible or just something that doesn't work. Now, as far as uh, data and statistics are concerned, it, like I said, it was kind of difficult to get this information out. Um, hopefully in the future, we'll have a lot more information as far as that concerned. I, I guess I'm the first person to ask for this <laughs> because it's been a couple weeks uh, trying to get it, but that's fine. Uh, you know, you gotta start somewhere, I guess. So um, currently we have 39 state agencies using Drupal um, for their website. And uh, basically I'd say they're a little over a hundred state agencies. Um, when you start talking about bigger agencies like emergency management division and uh, you know, probably DHEC, they have their own kind of thing. You know, they have their own private or uh, third party that does that. And you know, it seems to be working good for them. The official state government website, as I mentioned again, is through se.gov. So sounds like they can handle a pretty big website. Um, currently, we're using Drupal 8. Now, um, you know, as we know, that was Drupal 9 was released not too long ago. And, you know, I posed that question. Okay, well, you know, I think pretty much everybody's been using Drupal 8 for a while, kind of comfortable with it, which is good. Um, but ultimately, the question is okay, when are we going to Drupal 9? So, right now, as of July 2020, we don't. There are no plans to go to, to Drupal 9 just yet. Um, hopefully that'll be done in the future. And, you know, just to keep in touch with the times, always wanted to make sure that we're using the latest stuff with uh, the latest thing. Of course, there's gonna be this learning curve. And, uh, you know, from what I've, from my conversations with the uh, people who use Drupal um, for the, the state agency websites, and of course, this may change or this may be different for somebody else but based on my conversations um, most of the people who are doing or using Drupal to design their agency websites had no previous experience with website design um, so it's kind of like a learning curve for them um, and well for me you know, I didn't I didn't use Drupal before uh, I started working for the state so uh, you know it was a there was a learning curve for me as well even though i had coding as background so um they pretty much were comfortable with that they pretty much thought that was you know this is pretty much the best thing that beginners can use as far as having something to, to code or having something to put up a website so i don't i haven't heard anything negative as far as that is concerned of course there's room for improvements with anything but you know, that's, that's pretty much how state government um, handles the website you're, you're dealing with. You know, you could just take me, for example. I mean, I do IT, I do social media, I do kind of like the uh, 2.0 of Hispanic and Latino affairs too. I, I get a lot of requests to translate stuff, especially now. Um, so it's like, and then on top of all that, I do the website. So. I find that a lot of other people are kind of in that role too, where they're, you know, their main role where they were hired for was social media or communications. And they've been tech this on as well, as far as the website is concerned. So um, you're going to find a lot of our state employees that, that have these dual roles. So it kind of makes it difficult to concentrate on one thing. So that's all I've got. Um, for this presentation. Uh, if you all have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer those for you right now. If I can't answer them, I'll just, you know, run away and <laughs> hopefully you won't catch up to me. Thanks for, for putting this together. Um, 
are the the SC Gov folks? Is that a private company that set up a division doing this, or are they a state agency? Like, what what are they? They're a private company. Um, so basically, the state of South Carolina has contracted with them so they can provide number one the website services, and number two through Drupal. And number two, provide kind of applications as well. I know that uh, my communications director had spoken to them before about making some apps for us or just the app, have an app uh, for the agency, which would be nice. Um, so basically anything involved with the website, they personally handle. Um, their main thing is having this official state government website for the state of South Carolina. So they, they definitely, uh, they're just a private company. And, you know, like I said, they rebranded recently and we're changing their name. So that's, it's, it's uh, uh, they've got a five or whatever year contract with the state to do all the maintenance and handling it. Mainly security as well. You know, of course, uh, that's the main thing. And they train and there. Have they provided you guys like content style guides? It sounds like they've given you kind of how to on the site, but in terms of some of the, the writing guides, is that also among their training materials or? Me writing as far as coding is concerned or just? No, no, no. Uh, human writing, writing for humans. Uh, mm. I would say no. <laughs> Most of the stuff that we get on the training manual, and I, I could shoot you guys this as well. I can send that to you. It's about PDF. Most of the stuff that's on there is just basically you're just basic stuff. You know, um, don't start off with uh, heading one and then go to heading four to go back to heading one again. So stuff like that, just visually what to do. Um, one of the main things, of course, is use high quality pictures. Don't use, you know, 8-bit pictures that are just so pixelated that it really does not look good at all. And uh, when we, when they, when actually you, you start off with the website, they'll just have kind of random pictures of places in South Carolina. They'll have like a picture of Charleston and other places. And that's fine and all, but, you know, it really gives you the push to add your own pictures to personalize that to your page. So my biggest thing was, okay, well, we're the Commission for Minority Affairs. We need to show the people that we serve. So our, uh, my director decided, okay, well, let's show our advisory committees because they're composed of uh, ethnic minority communities uh, all over the state. So mm -hmm. right now on our little rotator, we have our Hispanic uh, advisory committee. We have our African-American and Native. So eventually... Um, want to get to the point where I go out when things go back to normal, I can go out and actually take pictures of actual tribal members uh, from South Carolina and not just use your, you know, stock kind of photos for those mm -hmm. kinds of things. And, you know, especially with the African American side of things, you know, actual historical places in South Carolina that, you know, people can visit when things go back to normal and learn about the history of, you know, African Americans in South Carolina and ultimately, you know, of this country. I mean, a lot of African American history comes through South Carolina. So, you know, we want to showcase that. We want to showcase positive things uh, on our website, you know, contributions uh, from ethnic minorities in the state. And as well as those organizations, you know, I just feel, and I mentioned this, you know, I sound like a broken record, but we, we, we work with so many organizations and for the most part, they do all pretty much all the work for us, and it seems like sometimes we get too much credit for it. So I want to make sure that we have this medium where we can, you know, have them recognized for all the hard work that they do uh, for our communities. What's the typical turnaround for a site? Because I know, like from the from the time that you. Um submit the first request and you know complete the questionnaire and get the training like what's the typical turnaround it seems like it's like an install profile or uh something to that nature um right um i would say about a month 
from the time that you finish the questionnaire to it actually going live. I would say it's about a month. Thanks. And, um, that's just pretty much just to get the website up and allow time for discussions to be had internally to, uh, you know, fix some things that need to be fixed or answer some questions. As I mentioned with people's names, that was kind of our biggest hurdle to cross. And we spent a good week or so discussing that topic alone. And, but we had uh, submitted the information on the other things. So, you know, we were just waiting. They were just basically waiting for us at that point. They had gotten everything done. So I would say it really depended as far as, um, I guess the knowledge factor, as far as, you know, if you're familiar with designing websites too, uh, someone who's not really familiar, I would guess it would probably take a little bit more time, maybe two months or so to get that up and ready. Um, so it is a collaborative process and that's kind of what I like about it because, you know, the whole team is involved. Uh, we, again, we have several uh, program areas and my thing was, okay, this is your program area. I want, I want you to be happy with the, your page. I want you to contribute and I wanted you to put it up to where you want it to look like, not necessarily, you know, what I want, you know, uh, I can make it happen. But at the same time, I just want to make, I would, I prefer people are comfortable uh, with their own page. Um, you know, just to give you some examples, our Hispanic page, of course, you know, if you're going to our Hispanic page, the expectation is you have stuff in Spanish. <laughs> I mean, that's just the, that's just the logic of things. Um, so I want to make sure that it's centered around Spanish and, you know, the pushback I got is like, well, you know, we're a, we're a state agency. We can't have stuff in Spanish. And I'm like, well, I understand that, but at the same time, do you want to serve this community or don't you want to serve this community? They understand Spanish. Yeah, they can probably get away with English, but we're trying to reach them. This is the best way to reach them. Uh, our native program is, is different from that, where we ourselves are not a real regulatory agency. However, the one kind of regulatory thing that we do is um, recognition of state tribes in the state. So having that information out there, what the process is, this is something directly from the governor's office that comes down. It's in our, um, in our statute, how we do this. So this is even, we even have a retention schedule that's completely separate from the agency retention schedule. Because when we're talking about state uh, or tribal recognition applications, we're talking about providing information, documents uh, to show that you've been in the state for at least a hundred years. So you're, you're talking about family trees, you're talking about, um, you know, church locations, dresses, all these, all this kind of personal information that, um, you know, when you start talking about family trees and family, you, you get into that kind of unsafe place where, you know, if somebody would find out they were uh, purposely kicked out of the family tree for somebody else's benefit and they were privy to that information, obviously you don't want that out there for other people to use as uh, clickbait or use for, you know, for their own purposes. So it, it's, it, it's uh, important against security on that and, um, you know, that, that f faces its own challenges. So we want to make sure that we have a process that's out there that people can read. Uh, we also want to make sure that, you know, the page itself is centered around things that matter to that specific community. Uh, you know, African American page, of course, we want to highlight our HBCUs in the state. We want to highlight, you know, cultural aspects. Uh, we have various organizations, as you know, in the state that handle cultural, our historical African American sites. Um, here in Columbia, we have Columbia SC 63 that they do a fantastic job in downtown Columbia. If you guys have never gone uh, and look at, you know, the history in South Carolina civil rights, uh, their focus on South Carolina's history, you know, one of their main things is, uh, you know, we always, when we talk about civil rights, and rightfully so, we, we, we talk about Alabama, we talk about the Selmas of the world, and we talk about the states, but we never, hardly ever had that conversation about how South Carolina has contributed to civil rights uh, in this country. So, um, you know, making sure those people, again, are highlighted. Um, 
and of course the biggest part of our agency is research. So having the latest research out there, I know uh, our research director of research, he's been, as you can imagine, uh, I went to the office the other day and he, he went to town on somebody's uh, wall, <laughs> just trying to figure out when is this going to level out? I mean, it, it, he's doing, he's crunching all kinds of numbers, just trying to figure out when we can finally level out of this and get back to some kind of normalcy and not having these huge spikes that we've had the last couple of weeks. So, you know, just trying to highlight those things. Um, it, I, I kind of see the pages as to be kind of like their own website on their own. Kind of, uh, you know, if you click on there, you're taken off to this other play, page of this website where you're, you have very, a very specific need that you're looking for. You know, when you were talking about the, the directory of both people and programs, it reminded me of when I was at a nonprofit and uh, we had very similar conversations of, do, do you guys actually do that? Like, I, I know you want to say that, but is that actually part of your program? Or is that just something you're aspiring to do? <laughs> yeah, and it's... Put a directory up. Are you, are you going to tell us every time somebody leaves so that we can take their name off and not have a dead end of communication that, that if we're going to yeah. put this out there, it should be right. So people can find you. And yeah. And then uh, it's a big a lot of too. <laughs> and, you know, I tell people everything that we're, since we're public, everything's under FOIA. So <laughs> even more, I mean, you don't want to put something on the website that we don't do because if somebody submits a FOIA request. Can you imagine, Hey, you guys said you do all these things. Can you show me uh based on your accountability report and any documents you have from 2017 forward showing any work done in this area. <laughs> and for us to turn around and say, oh yeah, we actually don't do that. <laughs> that could cause some problems. Uh, and we're public facing, that is not a good look to have. Um, so, and uh, you know, it's just, it's organization. It's, it's uh, just being out there communication as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, we really, we've improved on that a lot. There's still some areas where we can improve on a little bit, but for the most part, we got, we've got that check. Chris or Will, any other questions? Not for me. I appreciate the presentation though. Oh, thank you. I'll go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for presenting Mauricio. This is great.